I promised you a video on respiratory techniques so here it is and this includes breathing exercises pranayama and lung care especially important for this period also a few home remedies which support the respiratory system hope this helps you enjoy it Before we get on with this video, I just wanted to give you a brief update. I've come down with a sinus infection during the past weekend. I had washed my hair in the evening and then there was a power outage. So I mostly towel dried it with a quick dash of the blow dryer later on. Some hair from the middle length remained a bit damp. That was enough to trigger a sinus attack. That's what I am taking care of with all of these exercises and techniques for lung care, which include steam inhalation, salt water gargling. You could also use uh, betadine gargling. Uh, I've also been using a thermometer every day to monitor my body temperature. Also a pulse oximeter to check on the oxygen level in the blood. I felt the need for that particularly because I did get a little breathless over the weekend. Later on, I realized it could also be because of a new mask that I was using, which was a little tight. That's something we need to take care of. You need to keep a close watch on the kind of mask that you're using. Also, if you're using a cloth mask, you need to keep washing it regularly because the air that you breathe out consists of carbon dioxide, of course, and that collects on the layer, on the inside layer of the mask, and you're breathing that back inside. So there's a lot of carbon dioxide that you're breathing in. So, of course, wherever possible, at home of course you do need to stay without the mask breathe in a lot of fresh air if you have plants around with a few pranayams nothing like it nothing better than that I've shown some of the exercises in a previous video as well take a look at that too and I have a few breathing exercises in this video as well particularly respiratory techniques included which i as a matter of fact learned from a therapist about four years ago when i developed a lung disease called reactive airways disease so that's the first morbidity in fact that i have and the second being my uh, bladder tumor which was treated almost two years ago. Very important to take care of your lungs, especially when you do have any kind of comorbidity. So the two most important things that you need to keep at home really during this period is one of these is the thermometer and the second is a finger pulse oximeter. Now this is particularly of importance if you do have any kind of um, lung issues, lung health issues, if you have a lung disease or if you are experiencing breathlessness. So the Pulse oximeter runs on two AAA size batteries and it shows you the readings. What you need to do is basically clean your fingertip and the rubber mat inside this with um, 
Very good. Spirit, just regular surgical spirit before you use it. And to use this, you need to press down on the clamp, keep your finger right inside. Yeah, there is a sensor inside, and your finger must touch upon the sensor. A very important thing to maintain with this is that any nail polish on the nails will affect the reading or even if you have uh, false nails that will affect your reading. So this is good. I can feel the pressure on the finger while it's actually doing the reading as well. So my heartbeats per minute are showing up as 75 to 78, 79, which is in the normal range. And the SpO2, that's the oxygen meter, showing as 96%. Give or take a little bit less is okay, between the range of 94 to 100%. So now it's at 97%. And the BPM back up to 88, which is good. A digital thermometer also shows you the last two readings. So that is helpful in keeping track of your temperature. But if you do have a fever, then you should note it down every time you check, which should be about three times a day. Doing these respiratory exercises minimum three times every day will increase the lung muscle power. This is the most fun breathing technique. But if you don't have balloons at home right now, then you can use a straw, a whistle or even a conch shell or shank to blow into. If you don't have any of these, then simply purse your lips when exhaling so that the air goes out slowly. The idea is to breathe in as deeply as possible but also quickly and blow the air out through pursed lips slowly and as sharp and hard as possible. You can even make this a game for kids to join in. Inhale through the nose as deep as possible, filling the lungs completely and pushing out your abdomen too. And then while exhaling, empty out the lungs quickly while pulling in the abdomen to throw out all the air. Counting as you breathe helps to regulate your breathing. This simple technique is especially helpful during a stressful situation or even in a panic attack. Breathe in short bursts as you count to 10 when you inhale and again breathe out in controlled bursts as you exhale to the count of 10. This helps to control your breathing and strengthens the lung muscles. Antara Kumbhaka allows oxygen to be completely absorbed from each breath you take. Inhale and hold your breath in for as long as comfortable, then breathe normally for two minutes. Thirteen seconds. Thirteen and a half seconds, not bad. If you have a nethi pot, it's, uh, it's used in Ayurveda and uh, it's almost like a toy um, teapot with a longer nozzle really 
So uh, you use it with hot, you pour hot water into it, usually plain hot water or saline water, salt water, which you pour into one nostril and let it come out through the other nostril. I know it sounds icky, but it's really, really very good. Unfortunately, I don't have one. It would have been perfect, but salt water gargling works absolutely the same for me, actually. What happens is when I'm doing the gargle, I throw back my head and that allows the water to travel up into the nasal passage as well. And it actually pours out of the nostrils when I'm throwing the water out from my mouth. Drinking hot water helps to keep the mucus in your throat, trachea and airways thin. Besides soothing a sore throat and helping in reducing inflammation through hot fermentation, drinking water for hydration cleanses the lungs and flushes out toxins from the body. I prefer taking ginger and tulsi in my tea as both herbs have healing qualities of superfoods. Ginger has anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties among many others, while tulsi is an adaptogenic herb which helps counter metabolic stress levels by mitigating blood glucose and high blood pressure. I even add tulsi leaves to my hot water flask, which I keep drinking throughout the day. Of course, it helps that I have lots of tulsi plants growing in my backyard. If you cannot access tulsi that easily, then you can even take tulsi tablets by Himalaya Wellness. Steam inhalation is the best therapy for loosening the mucus from the entire respiratory system and the only one that works on the entire lung area plus it helps in calming and dilating the alveoli in the lungs the tiny air sacs which are the workhorse of our respiratory system taking in oxygen and keeping our body going we have about 480 million alveoli in the lungs and to think these microscopic critical part of our lungs are being singled out and brutalized by COVID-19. I find adding ajwain or caraway seeds to the pot of boiling water most effective for my sinuses, but I also use just plain drinking water. You can even add any inhalant capsule like Carvol Plus, which contains camphor, menthol, etc., and is easily available in medical stores, but be aware of their side effects. Turmeric milk is loaded with antioxidant, anti-inflammatory and antimicrobial properties and fights against bacterial and viral infections. This is a highly effective home remedy for bronchitis, asthma, sinus and lung congestion. You can add any spices of choice like cinnamon, ginger and black pepper and for sweetening add honey or cane sugar. So if you like this video then you know what to do. Hit the like button below the video itself on YouTube. I know you'd let me know a lot more on the other social media but I would really like to hear from you on YouTube itself. If you have a Gmail account which most of us do now of course you can use the same ID to leave a comment on YouTube as well. You can use it for clicking on the like button. That's the same thing, right? And subscribe to the channel by clicking on the red subscribe button as well as the bell icon next to it, which will help you receive all the videos directly into your inbox so that you don't miss any of the videos. I'll see you soon and thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.